Have you ever copied a formula in Excel only to get completely wrong results? Or maybe you've seen those dollar signs in formulas and wondered what they actually do. Well, in this lesson, I'm going to clear it all up. We will break down relative, absolute, and mixed references in Excel so you can use them correctly and never mess up your formulas again. Let's jump right in. Before we dive into dollar signs, let's first understand what happens when you copy a formula in Excel. Let's say we have a simple multiplication of the quantity sold, cell C5, by the price, cell D5. When you drag the formula down, you will observe that Excel automatically adjusts the row number accordingly. This is called a relative reference. But what if you need to lock a specific value? Now, let's say we have a discount rate stored in cell F2. And we want to apply the discount to the total sales of all products. If we type the total sales multiplied by the discount and drag down, we notice that something goes wrong. The cell reference shifts downwards. And this is not what we want. In order to fix this, we need to use an absolute reference, which means adding dollar signs to cell F2. Now, instead of typing the dollar signs manually, when we click beside F2 and press the F4 key, Excel will automatically add the dollar signs. Now, if we press the F4 key again, it will only add one dollar sign before the number. If we press it a third time, it will add the dollar sign before the letter. And if we press it a fourth time, it will take the dollar signs away completely. So we will press the F4 key once and copy our formula down. When we look at the formula, we will notice that the cell with the dollar sign does not change, but the cell without the dollar sign is referenced relatively. Now we will use relative referencing to calculate the final cell. Now, let's say we want to calculate the commission amount, given the commission rates. If we multiply cell G5 by H5 and drag, we notice there's a problem. In this case, relative referencing is not going to work. Now, let us lock cell H4 and copy the formula down. It appears to be working well, but what happens if we copy the formula horizontally? Now, something looks wrong. We observe that even in column J, we're still referencing H4 rather than J4. This is where mixed referencing comes in. Now let's take out all of our formulas and think of what we're trying to achieve. The first variable is the G5 is bringing in the sales amount. The final sales are cross cell G5, G6, G7, G8, and G9. The column letter G is consistent amongst all of the final sales. This tells us that we need to lock the column G while the row 5 stays relative. Now, looking at the commission rates, which is cell H4, we want to make use of cell H4, I4, and J4. What they all have in common is the number 4, but the letters change with the different columns. So we will have a formula that would fix column G and row 4. Let's type that in and take a look. 
to fix the column G, we're going to press the F4 key three times. And to fix row four, we'll come to the H4 formula and press the F4 key twice. Now, when we copy our formula, we can see that our formula is acting just exactly the way we want it to. All right, let's recap what we've learned. Relative referencing changes when copied. Absolute referencing never changes when copied. And mixed referencing, the column never changes when the dollar sign is before the letter and the row does not change when the dollar sign is before the number. And that's it. Now you know exactly how and when to use the dollar sign in Excel formulas. If this video helped, be sure to like, subscribe, and drop a comment if you have any questions. Keep playing with data, and I'll see you in the next lesson.